Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Hello, everybody. Um, Hi. So today we're going to be talking about networking and uh, how to find your own style of networking and also how important it is to get out there and network. This week on Thursday, we interviewed Tanya from Reisler Talent. She's been an agent for 20 years, and she talked about how important it is to build relationships with people in the community, in the industry. And she talked about how she does in her agency, build relationships with producers and casting to make sure her people have a good solid chances and opportunities, but also how she asks her clients to sometimes get in touch with people on their end to help them get, you know, seen and noticed also. So I thought that was a great topic. I think it's an important topic. I've been thinking a lot about it as I'm working harder to get myself more in the voice community. And I've been also doing, I don't like to call it networking. I like to kind of call it socializing or, or getting in touch with my peers and, Mm -hmm. you know, letting them know I'm working at this and I, and and I'm really interested in doing more of it. So uh, it did get me thinking about how important building those relationships are. And Jess and I, before we started recording, had a conversation about that. I, I had asked her that I have had this conversation with the students about, you know, I had a student and he's has an agent, he's self-taped and then, and then he got an introduction to a casting person and they had mentioned he, the audition didn't end up, he didn't end up booking it, but they had mentioned what a good audition he did. So I was thinking that you see just getting to know people like casting people, perhaps it will influence them and spending more time watching their tape. Obviously, Jess, so Jess is looking at me for what, but obviously (laughs) the most important is the acting. And even if she doesn't know you and you make an interesting choice, that's going to cause her to lean into even more than the fact that you had a coffee with her. But, but it certainly, I think helps, especially if you're looking at the long game. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Yeah. I mean, I think it all helps, you know, like if when I meet actors, like, and I know that they're training and working and they're nice people and all of that stuff, like that all helps and adds to it. But with a huge disclaimer, like that it, your auditions have to be good. They have to fit the style of the project and they have to meet the director's needs and wants So, you know, that's what it comes down to. But yes, of course, I get so excited when I know actors. And I mean, at this point, (laughs) I know a lot of them. So I get excited to watch all the self tapes um, and and see what they've done, what choices they've made, what, you know, so I, I do get excited when or if I've asked for someone specifically for a role to see what they've done. But then I also, I guess I go back and like, how much is it? networking how much is it pr you know right. like i i guess it's a bit of a fine line like is there strategy i guess i come from like i think all relationships are important and right. you also just never know where someone will end up so yes. to treat people and to meet everyone especially in this industry you never know where someone will like what their goals are and where what they'll end up doing will they end up producing or directing? And that's when it's important to <laughs> be and, like, well, no. And that's when the relationship is important. Like if you're in acting class and you're the person yeah. sitting next to you has done, you know, has no resume yet, or hasn't done a lot of work, you treat them the same as you would the director who you just met. You don't mm-hmm. blow that person off. And I'm going to only talk to that person, of course, because we can read that reads and that, and that's awful, but you don't know what, like you said, that person in the class in 10 years 
might be the biggest director ever. So yeah, you treat everybody kindly and well, but there could be a little bit of strategy also, let's say if you're going to a mixer, you might not want to only spend time with your roommate who you came with. You have to kind of branch out and talk to different people. And if you know there's a casting director or a director, you might want to try to act, ask for an introduction. You don't need to, you know, sit and ramble off your resume to them and start trying to do a hard sell because that's also yeah. kind of icky. But you can say, hi, oh, I'm so happy to meet you and I really enjoy your films or uh, thank you so much for bringing me in uh, for that self-tape. And that's it. And then you can walk away. <laughs> you don't have to, yeah. that was and it will do. But uh, definitely, uh, I think you can also branch out from your mini circles and try to get out there and meet other people too. Yeah, I agree. And then even the other thing that we spoke about, and I still can't really find the right word for it, but when Tanya was talking to us about like the dubbing ball, yes, and yes. I was like, we're missing this like elegance or maybe like this glam of like the Glamour, industry. Yeah. Like, I feel like too, like, you know, there's tons of theater and shows. That's a great way to get a casting director's attention is invite them to your show, invite them mm. to the opening. Like that doesn't really happen any, you know, like, and I don't know. I just feel like we're missing a bit of that. I guess that is PR. Yeah. You know, getting like T Tanya used to say, like at the end of the year, we would send producers that our talent worked with you know, a, a voice demo with a gift basket. Like, thank you so much for all of the work. And here's demos of all of our voice talent. Those things are important. And if we're going to talk about like the business of acting, like PR, that is part of the business is maintaining those relationships and just following through and leaving on a good note. And again, this is very different. Like not, we, we cannot bribe. Yeah, <laughs> like, yes. It should really come after a booking, not after an audition, not after a callback. It's really after a booking um, to Really? Yes, I did. I, I had a, that story and I won't say who it was. It was actually a friend of mine. She got a call back for a pretty big role and she sent the casting director flowers after a callback and the casting director sent them right back to the agent with a call saying, I really don't appreciate um, getting flowers on a callback. I do not want gifts. And she really yeah. didn't like it. It made her feel very uncomfortable. And this person didn't get the role, not because she sent flowers, but because somebody else who got the role and yeah. it made the casting director feel awkward. Right. Um, and then I had another story from an agent who had received this big, beautiful basket with like food and flowers. And then a, the card said, now that I've got your attention and here's my demo. And the agent was like, whoa, <laughs> very put off by that. They were like, that felt so much like bribery that they were really not comfortable with it. So I think it's finding, you got to find your way and, but also know your audience. Like there are some casting directors who like getting bottles of wine when you go and audition, <laughs> you know, or something. Jess is like, eh, you know, sometimes no, no, but you know what I mean? So, some people, and there are some who find it too much like bribery. So I would say it's always better. Jess, you can agree. Do like little small things like thank you cards or uh -huh. I don't know, I baked cookies, I brought you one or something like something little that because like huge baskets, you know, $200 bottles of champagne and stuff, it feels a little, I don't know you and I'm, can't, there's nothing I can yeah. do for you. It, it, it feels well, it's uncomfortable. Like how we compared like casting in this whole acting world to dating and it's, it's like, you know, you get a bouquet of flowers from like someone you're not interested in. You're like, you know, yes. versus like someone who like you are and you're like, oh my God, that was so sweet. Like, thank you so much. You know, right. like that was so romantic. It's like, so it's like, yeah, you got to just like know the audience. Yeah, you don't know they're in interested yet and too much right. too soon can put them off. So, yeah. but find your way again. I think most actors or most of my students are certainly me. I'm more the opposite. I'm the one who'll go to the party with my roommate. I, I don't have a roommate and not move. Like I'm staying <laughs> with this person. Now I'm better because 
I can say that too. I've been in the here in Montreal for 27 years. So when I go to a party, I know a lot of people now. So it's a lot easier for me to, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you to go around? But I do remember those days when I did just started. And certainly when I tried to move to Toronto a couple of times, I didn't know anybody. It was like, really, I can see, I know how, how hard it is. And there you should yeah. try to push yourself a little bit to mingle if that's what you're there for and yeah. uh, get introduced to people. And if you aren't getting introduced to people, then yeah, just try to, you know, mingle a little bit and, and yeah. get a, out of your comfort zone. Right. Um, but there is strategy. And I think the best thing for strategy is thank you because asking people for things is, is hard and can make them feel uncomfortable. Like mm -hmm. just, I don't know how you feel if you just meet an actor and they're like, so what are you casting right now? Is there anything I can go in for as opposed to like, Oh, hi, nice to meet you. I just signed with this agency. Uh, I look forward to working with you soon, or I hope to, I hope to audition for you soon. It's a lot yeah. different than Very different. what can you do for me? Or yeah. I'm new to the city or I'm new in this and I'm excited. So whenever something's around, uh, I, I look forward to, you know, sending you a self tape at some yeah. point. I think it's yeah, a lot better. Exactly. The intention behind it is very, very different. And you like you nailed it in that it's what can you do for me versus here's a quick update. I don't expect anything, you know, and again, cause I can't promise anything. Like right. I, I get emails and Facebook messages from people like saying like, Hey, is there anything? I, do you have anything for me? And I'm just like, Hey, like, where's your headshot? Like <laughs> do you have a demo. Yeah. And also I post breakdowns. So right. like, I don't keep a roster of people. I cast on a project basis. So, and to, like just getting emails like that, I'm just, I won't remember, but that's why, like, if I go to a show or if you, you know, or if you send me an email saying like, Hey, I'm with this new agency, it's good, but all like, and do it. Cause that's, you know, like why not? But right again, until like that agent will submit you for projects. I may not, you know, like yeah, I may, you may, not, may not remember, click. you like, may not click, of course. Right. Exactly. So, um, unless it's like really something that I'm looking for specifically at that moment, it, it won't really click necessarily, but it's not, I don't get turned off by those emails, you know, or like, Hey, here's my latest demo. Like that's cool. Right. What about, I want to ask, is it a good idea for an actor to ask their agent to ask the casting for feedback? Yeah, I think, um, well, I think again, like that was the other really important thing that we spoke with Tanya is like that open communication. Like yeah. I think your agent will have, well, first of all, your agent will probably see your self tapes, you yes. know? So th that's a huge advantage now for agents. Like, right they're a good judge of, did you do your best? And what, maybe you could try this differently. So, but no, again, like if, if people are asking, like they've auditioned multiple times on a project and it's not working, of course, like the agent, usually it's not even the actor who will ask the agent to ask. It's usually the agent who will just be like, is there any, what's going any on? notes? Yeah. What's going, like, is there anything going on, you know? And I think that's totally legitimate. And if you have an agent, definitely go through your agent, uh, Unless we have, uh, you know, I have some like, I guess, friendships within the acting community and some people reach out directly and that does not bother me, but I've also built relationships with them throughout the years, you know? Right. It's not a one-off. It's, it's, they known you for a while. Yeah. Um, like if I get like out of the left field of like, Hey, I auditioned for this project, any notes, it's like, who um, are you? that would be <laughs> weird. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Maybe not, but yeah, it can be bombarded. That's the whole point. We you have to get the job Even passed. on in-person auditions, yes, you might get like what you call feedback of really, it's just a direction, but you won't yeah. really get, oh, you did a great job and maybe you should do this. Like you won't get that in an in-person audition anyway, usually. Right. You don't, yeah, they don't, they don't tell you, they'll give you an adjustment and that's pretty much it. Yeah. And that's not really feedback. It's, it's a direction. It's a direction. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I told the students and you can correct me. I said, look, it is important to have good relationships with the casting. So there are mixers and play openings and places where you can get that introduction. And also I think 
it's important to know again, we've said it, what role you have. I said, look, this is now in the world of self tapes, they certainly, I think will hone it down, but they are not making the final selection, not in English anyways, mm -hmm. in French on some of maybe the one liners and stuff, they pick their people or this is actually even sometimes deuxième role, they'd pick their people for the smaller ones, but in English, because everybody who's doing projects in English in Montreal is coming from somewhere else. It's not home yeah. productions. They're coming for, so they don't really know the talent. It's always new. So they have to audition for everything, even those actor roles without lines, as long as it's not an extra, they have to audition for those non-speaking actor roles. And now Jess as a casting person will take it down to what her top five, her top 10, like what is the numbers that you're sending to the director and the production usually? I think it varies on the role. Okay. And I would say like, I guess between five and 10, depending on okay. the role. And we could have received like 50 self tapes, 20, okay. 100. Okay. Again, depending, depending. on the role. <laughs> and then I guess when it comes down to the smaller actor roles, like we really are quite like laser focused on what the director likes based right. on past decisions and choices. And so that also helps us maybe narrow it down. But again, like we focus on like giving sometimes like a diverse set of options because you never know. So, and a, so a, a few notes on this topic is, yes, it comes down to, yes, the relationship is of course important, but also like doing good work because that's a reflection of yourself mm -hmm. and also your agent. Yes. And then if you want me to submit you, I'm only going to submit good work because yes. that's a reflection on me. If I'm like, yeah. Hey, look at this guy. And like, it's a shit audition. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck is yeah, no, that? it's your, you, you have so a job. Yeah. It's, <laughs> right. it's the work. chain of do good work for yourself, but also for your agent forecasting. Like I always say, help me help you. Yeah. If you want me to push you forward, you need to give me good work. And right. Tanya said the same thing of like in her relationship, give me great tools so I could promote you that I could yeah. ask for double scale on projects that I know have budget or whatever. Like we all are in this together <laughs> and, yeah. and it's so important. Yeah. So there's that. And I think that's it. Of course, if I like you, I will try, or if I have a relationship with you, yeah, I'll maybe try and, uh, you know, get it pushed forward. But even if you did a great job, I really don't feel like it's the right fit. Yeah. You know, maybe I won't put you forward. So, well, you can't. And I get it too. If yeah. I was, listen, I, I, I love my students. And if I was a director, I would want to cast every single one of them, but yeah. obviously you can't you, and you, you want to get the best person in for that job. Um, yeah. what I do say is build those relationships. So, cause I do think if you do a killer self tape, plus you have a good relationship, yeah. they will lean in and be influenced. The casting yeah. director, sorry, just is not going to say, oh yeah, I cast who I like. They're going to cast who's the best person. And I think it's almost un unknowingly that they're being influenced by the, that relationship. You know, yeah. it's like anything, but you have to, number one, you have to have good work. Number yeah. two, you, uh, building those relationships will help you long-term, you yeah. know? Um, Absolutely. And, and like we talk about on this podcast, it's literally you come and you deliver good work. It may not be good for this, but then I'll remember you too for the next project. Yes. And it's like, yep, they consistently delivered good work. They weren't right for this project, but they would be great for this. And, and like we say, like, that's where it all, you know, you never know where things are going to lead to. And, um, that's why it's also just super important. How do you think an actor like what's the best move for an actor to get ahead? I have a student who's a very good actor um, and he's frustrated because he feels that he's just not working enough. I'm like, welcome to the club. <laughs> Every actor feels that way, but he still feels like he's also in the realm of actor role and he'd be like to be considered for guest star and principal. And he's like, I don't know what to do. Like I'm taking classes and I doing good work. I feel my tapes are good, but I'm still haven't hit that higher level. Um, and I was like, well, 
networking, you know? <laughs> and, and when and I was like, I didn't know why, I don't know why he sort of feels like he's plateaued at more the actor, small principal kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know why he's plateauing. Cause I do think he's a good actor, but I do think because I, I also believe, and sorry, I'm having a hard time finding my train of thought because I don't have the answer. Yeah. I do think that the actors I've seen who have had long-term successful careers have in Montreal diversified, but out of Montreal been ambitious, um, strategic and really wanting to get ahead and meeting the right people, asking the right questions. And I'm just wondering, do you have any, like, would you have any notes on that? Like what they could do on the business side, if they're working on their craft, like what they could do on the business side? Well, I think it could be like about how they're marketing themselves right? Like in a way. Cause like when they're going in for supporting roles, you know, like some, it depends on what service, like if it's a streaming service or whatever, sometimes they want some names with, with resume. Right. Right. So yeah. it's, maybe there's a way to market yourself differently if you're not really getting that like chance. Yeah. I don't know, to be honest, oh, like it's hard. I told him after we had this conversation when he feels he's done everything and he doesn't like know what left to do. We also had the conversation that he doesn't have a really, um, open communication with his agent about this is what he wants to be seen as. And how can we do that? So I was like, we'll start there. Like you're allowed to say I've been, you know, stuck at the actor level and I'd like to move it up and have that conversation with your agent. Yeah. And I think that's a good start. And then they can say why they feel you're stuck at that level. And maybe then they'll have that conversation with the casting. I really want to push my client in for larger projects or yeah. larger roles in these projects. Yeah. Um, he's proved himself for whatever, and then move it like that. So I would say this is kind of first have that relationship with your agent. I think that's yeah. really important. And the, and the, honest conversation of what your goals are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even again, like Tanya said, like there was a client that wanted to be, she was like, why am I not auditioning in French? She's like, I I didn't know you were fluent in French. Like I didn't know, (laughs) like, you gotta tell me these things. You have to communicate them very clearly. It's, it's so important. So yeah, maybe his agent doesn't know that he's ready and wanting to, be marketed in a way to yeah. start being seen for bigger roles and, and exactly. considered for bigger roles. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to start that conversation with your agent. And then also, um, it is a business. And I do think, uh, like, uh, Tanya was saying her favorite is play openings. Cause there's always casting there and there's really, uh, um, experienced actors there who you can mm-hmm. also make friends with because they will have, you know, a wealth of experience. They've been around for 20 plus years and have things to say. Also have that relationship with your agent Mm -hmm. and brains. Your agent will also have a lot of ideas. So I think just feeling like, why am I always, you know, only being seen like this? You do have to have that conversation. And like you said, be clear on what you want. Yeah. And and have that. Not to expect it like overnight, just because you declare like to your agent that like, this is what I'm looking for. It doesn't mean you're going to start going in right away. I'm sure there's, you know, agents look at like, yeah, big picture, longer term. So like a plan will be put in place. And yes. And uh, yeah, it's not, I want to get leads. The question is, how can I move from where I am now to bigger parts to eventually get leads? Like what, what do I need to do on my end? And like, and that might be meeting some people in the industry. Um, we haven't had a lot of opportunities. I, I find in Montreal to mix necessarily with producers and directors and things like that, because I think a lot of them aren't, um, from here. (laughs) <laughs> they're from other places. Like they come here, like the French side, they're here. But uh, in Montreal, the English side, they kind of come here. Voice directors, for sure, you guys, they're all actors and they're all mm-hmm. really nice and very kind. And yeah, so that that is something that is easier to kind of try to build those relationships because they're around. 
casting yeah. is here and they're at most of the play openings in the mixers. So they are also people you can, you know, uh, build those relationships with. And the directors, I think, well, once you've been in a project of theirs, then thank you notes are good. And you know, trying to create organic relationships too, um, without being pushy and I, I, but being strategic about it, you know, don't try to build a relationship with a director who you couldn't stand. Like you have to like them. Yeah. (laughs) You have to like them. And, uh, yeah. If you go for a job interview, yeah. You know, you send a follow-up email, like, yeah even like start following fellow artists on social media, like Mm -hmm. seeing what they're up to and, you know, having some back and forth through there, like that all builds. So, um, yeah. So that's it. We look forward to continuing this conversation and you're going to hear Tanya from Reisler Talent, an agent's perspective on it. And it was uh, very eye-opening and she gave some very good advice and uh, opened up, uh, I think, opened up a a lot of uh, questions about that relationship and how important that agent-actor relationship is. Yeah. So we will see you on Thursday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. If you're enjoying this podcast, we would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to support us. Leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. You can share this podcast with your friends and colleagues and follow us on social media at Book the Room Podcast. We put out episodes weekly, so subscribe to the shows to get notified.